All right, in the last section where you were doing substitution, you were doing indefinite integrals, meaning there were no limits of integration. In other words, you were just finding antiderivatives using substitution. Well, the problem is, is when we actually have limits of integration, meaning I have values here that I want to find the area, then my limits of integration are going to change when my variable of integration is changed by the substitution. In other words, what we've been doing is we've been taking this chain rule and undoing the chain rule by the substitution, and we did it by substitution with u, and so we created this new function in terms of u, and our limits of integration have to change because we changed our variable. So in other words, we evaluate at these new limits of integration. Okay, probably a lot easier to see this um, as an example. And you don't have to do this, but as you're going to see with this example, sometimes it's actually easier um, to do it this way. All right, so here's two methods. The first method is using this theorem. All right, so method one using the above theorem. So I have, I want to find the area under the curve from negative one to one of three x squared times the square root of x cubed plus one dx. So right away you can see that you have um, something going on with a chain rule, two pieces here, um, this product of these two functions, so I know I'm going to need to do some substitution. So I'm going to do that over here on the side. I'm going to let u equal what's under my square root, x cubed plus 1. So then du, the derivative with respect to x, would be 3x squared dx, which is nice because you see that's that piece right there. Okay, so now with our theorem, it says to do this, we actually need to change my limits of integration. So the bottom one down here is x equals negative 1. So when x equals negative 1, we can plug a negative 1 in there and see that u, negative 1 cubed, still negative 1, would equal 0. If I look at the top one, when x equals a positive 1, then u is going to equal 2 because 1 cubed is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. So these become my limits of integration using this theorem, meaning I have now, instead of from negative 1 to 1, the lower 0 to the upper to 2. I've up here said let u equal what's under my square root, so that's u to the 1 half, and then my du takes place of those two pieces. So that became my u to the 1 half, that's my substitution part. And so now I just simply find my antiderivative, which we know by now how to do that, right? You add 1, so u to the 1 half plus 1 over 1 half plus 1, and I'm evaluating this, or finding the area, from 0 to 2. So this is going to give me 2 thirds u to the 3 halves, because I've added 1 half plus 1, and then the bottom becomes 3 halves, flip it over, all that good stuff, evaluating from 0 to 2. So now I do my fundamental theorem of calculus. This is this whole f of b minus f of a, and so I evaluate two-thirds the u first at two to the three-halves power, so that's my first one, minus 
Now I evaluate two-thirds at the bottom, which is zero to the three halves power. And of course, as you can see, that piece is going to just give me zero, so I need to see what this piece is going to do. So this gives me two-thirds. Remember the three-halves power means the square root of two cubed. Okay, so that's what that means. The one-half means the square root, and then the three is my exponent. So that gives me two-thirds square root of eight. Well, the square root of eight is the same thing as four times two. As you see, I can take out a square root of four, which is a two. So all I did was take out that square root, and now I end up with two times two is four to the square root of two over three. And that gives me my area. So that was doing it with this theorem by changing. You noticed what I did is I changed my limits of integration. Well, you don't have to do that if you this step here, you just substitute it and put everything back in terms of x. So it's, you know, it's a lot of time it's dependent on what do you think is easier. And so let's see. Let's go back to my original problem, which was negative 1, 1, 3x squared, square root of x cubed, plus 1 dx. I already know from up above, this is u to the 1 half du, which is 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. So, so far nothing's different. This is, this is exactly what we did to that step. The only difference now is what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute what my u was. So that's way back up here somewhere. Oops. So my u was x cubed plus 1. So if, if I substitute that back, then I can actually keep my same limits of integration. Why? Because, oops, I didn't mean to write that. Why? Because now I'm going to put everything in terms of x. I've already taken the antiderivative is why I didn't need that again. So in other words, I'm going to have 2 thirds. Where I see u, I'm going to substitute x cubed plus 1 to the 3 halves. And now I can evaluate this from negative 1 to 1. In other words, I can use my original limits of integration. So you have two choices. You either leave everything in terms of u. And as you can see with this problem, you had a little less to deal with to do that. Or you can change everything back, substitute back for your u, and then you can use the same limits of integration. And as you're going to see, so we're going to have 2 thirds, 1, so I'm doing this top one, cubed plus 1 to the 3 halves, minus 2 thirds, negative 1 cubed plus 1 to the 3 halves, that, of course, is going to become 0, and hopefully you can already see that this is going to become 2 thirds, 2 to the 3 halves, which is the same as 2 thirds square root of 2 cubed, which is the same as my last answer. So a lot of it you're going to see later that you might say, well, I don't want to change this because this is confusing up here. But sometimes putting things in terms of u is a lot simpler for plugging these values back in.